Welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, you are going to see a management of a posterior capsular rent. The video is highly edited, but uh, I have edited this video in such a way that you can follow all these steps. By this time, the main incision has been made. This is a side port on the left side of the main incision. The anterior chamber has been filled up with visco. The capsular excess is done with the help of a uh, iterator forceps, an adequate sized rexis of about 5.5 millimeter is achieved, hydrodissection is done with the help of bases and 27 gauss cannula, the nucleus rotates beautifully, the antechamber is again filled up with visco and now is the time to go uh, to use a pre-chopper. I divide the nucleus into two heminuclei and again divide on heminucleus into two uh, pieces. There is no chance that this maneuver is causing the posterior capsular rent because the instruments are measured and smooth. And now I start uh, managing the nucleus, one nuclear fragment removed. Then I come to the other heminucleus, it is divided into two pieces and on, on piece is removed and then the other piece and finally as I try to emulsify the final piece and divide this into two pieces, rent. So there is some part, a portion of the nucleus still remaining there and this rent. This is chondroitin sulfate and sodium hyaluronate combination. It is placed and the rent is attempted to get sealed so that the piece, nuclear piece that is there does not drop into the vitreous cavity. And now I take a Sinsky hook and manipulate this and bring it out of the uh, capsular bag that is the upper part of the bag which is intact and bring it in the anterior chamber. That the uh, viscoelastic substance again, chondroitin sulfate and sodium hyaluronate combination and now I do a small peritomy of about 6 millimeter. This is the peritomy and now I take a uh, uh, keratom. I do not take the crescent knife, take a keratom, just mark uh, the how I how to go and now I enter into the AC making the tunnel by the keratom itself and go into the anterior chamber. I uh, extend the extend the uh, tunnel on either side to get um, sclerocorneal wound of, of about 6 millimeter. My plan is to implant a rigid IOL PMMA IOL in the sulcus because the patient cannot afford uh, multipiece lens, sensor multipiece lens. And by visco expression, I remove the nuclear piece. Now I have to make another side port for anterior vitrectomy, and in this case, I am planning limbal vitrectomy, not going through the pars plana. And I start vitrectomy. At this time, the setting is the uh, cut rate is 3000 per minute, vacuum is 200 and flow rate is 30. So uh, cutting is in progress and when I think that uh, enough vitrectomy has been done, the, it appears that is there is no more vitreous f f strands in the anterior chamber then I uh, come out 
and next plan is to remove the cortex. Inject some visco and now I am going to dry aspirate this cortex means without irrigation I want to or very mild irrigation where flow is decreased and then I start removing the cortex. The cortex from 6 o'clock from 7 o'clock is removed and then from 5 o'clock so very slow surgery we cannot hurry up we cannot pull the vitreous strands as soon as we feel that there is some vitreous strand it is called up we st immediately stop uh, flush out the vitreous strand and come out now I'm I'm identifying the you know the vitreous strands that is in the main wound and I find that there is some vitreous strand the thick uh, white you know the thick white strand is there on the left side of the tunnel I'm trying to you know, hold it but I should not pull it I know that so I hold this vitreous strand and there is some more vitreous strand coming uh, to the wound I can uh, identify that with the Sensky hook. I cut this strand at the wound with the Avana scissor and now it's the time to uh, do vitrectomy again. So I am irrigating from the 8 o'clock side port going through the wound at uh, 11 o'clock and removing the cortex from 2 o'clock. First sound vitrectomy and now I do some more vitrectomy here irrigation from 2 o'clock and cutting from 8 o'clock and now here without irrigation I, I did some cuts to remove the vitreous strand that, uh, that came out through the main wound some more uh, viscoat uh, not viscoat this is hylocoat that is a uh, combination of chondroitin sulfate and sodium hyaluronate and now I go through the 8 o'clock side port and remove the rest of the cortex which is there from you know, 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock all the cortex nicely removed and now is the time to implant an intraocular lens hylocoat again and take a multipiece lens that is a PMMA lens a 6 millimeter optic and this optic will sit nicely over the uh, you know over the rexis the leading haptic has gone in the sulcus the trailing haptic is still over the iris so what I do is I go through the 8 o'clock side port no I went through the wound at 11 o'clock the phaco main wound and dialed the lens in the capsular bag uh, in the uh, sulcus I mean the trailing haptic has been placed in the sulcus rotated the trailing haptic is now at 6 o'clock the leading haptic has come towards 12 o'clock and the lens is nicely centered I didn't aspirate I did cutting and aspiration so that if there is some vitreous strand somewhere it will not get uh, no, pulled So I've gone behind the lens and removing some uh, visco that has gone in the antivitreous. And now I find that the lens is not central, it is decentered a bit. So I'm going to dial the lens and find a position where it is nicely centered. So uh, rotating uh, the lens using the dialing holes and the haptic optic junction and uh, rotating again and I find that this is the correct position if the 
haptic is haptic optic junction is at 5 o'clock the best position to center the lens. And now I inject air and now my plan is to suture the wound. Two releasable wound sutures at this at the two ends of the peritomy and the at the middle here uh, corneoscleral suture to close the wound that is about 6 millimeter. So, here is this is the corneoscleral uh, suture bites and finally, these are the bites on the left side of the peritomy for you know for a position of the conjunctiva. This is a bit of pilocarpin and and now I am um, going to uh, make the knots. This is the releasable suture at the right corner, at the middle this is the corneoscleral suture. This tension should be such that it is neither tight nor loose. Nice apposition of the wound margins that is the aim. If we make it tight there will be astigmatism, if we make it loose there will be leakage. So, optimum you know if there is a full chamber anti air bubble we can we can uh, estimate how much tension is there in the wound. And now this is the uh, an, a bit of cutter because there was there is a bit stand at around uh, 8 o'clock. So, I used the cutter to do this vitectomy and now we are towards the end of the surgery. We have done our best. This is closure of the side ports. I am using diluted moxifloxacin to do this and see the post op pictures. How beautiful is the uh, apposition of the own. This, these are the pictures after 48 hours cornea is absolutely clear, no corneal edema at all. Thank you very much for your attention.